Boom shakalaka. What is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love and today we are going to talk about when is this freaking crypto market going to recover? Now I was supposed to have a live stream with I Love Crypto tonight, but it got postponed due to last minute issues. We will have it again in the future. So I apologize for that. We'll have it coming up. Before we get started, just want to say thank you to everyone subscribing. Thank you everyone nuking the shit out of the like button with those bows. And then also, if you want to get one of these shirts, make sure you comment on this video and every other video for your chance to win. Now, as for most of you, I think the majority of people who got into crypto nowadays got into crypto when it was way up here, when the price was like bananas, okay? And now they've taken quite a hit on their investment, some down as much as like 60%, maybe even more, maybe even like 80, 90%, all right? And right now it's getting to a point, okay? Market consolidation, market... Um, basically where it's shaking out the last of the people in the branches. Now, will it continue to go down? It's possible. Will it go up? Also possible. We're going to talk about both reasons why and why not and what it means for you. Now, people oftentimes ask me what I do. Yeah, I'm in this for the long term. I get into cryptocurrency knowing that I was in it for the long term. I didn't think that it was going to be this like miracle cure. I was actually like blown away that, you know, the market's went up more than 20 times in a year. Like I was just shocked how much it went up the first year that I got in. I got in the beginning of 2017. But a lot of people got in towards the end of the 2017 because they were promised this goose with a golden egg and all they got was like fried duck, okay? So it's not great for them. Now, this looks terrible. This graph behind me looks freaking terrible because you're like, uh, oh, it's all gone. It's going to zero. Uh, uh, uh. Well, what you forget is that it costs money to create Bitcoin. Okay, somewhere between two thousand and six thousand dollars to create one Bitcoin, and that two thousand dollars is on the giant mining farms like Genesis Mining, if they can even get it that cheap. While as most of like the hobbyist Bitcoiners, investors, Bitcoin miners, they're looking at like six thousand dollars per Bitcoin. So the price goes below that. They're not going to be selling it. A lot less Bitcoin in circulation. Um, simple economics, supply and demand. Well, the supply will drop significantly. So if the demand stays the same, that'll bump the price up. Or, I mean, this, the demand could drop because interest could go away. That's what happened in 2014 after Mt. Gox. Interest went away for a while. Bitcoin prices stagnated for a while. Then they shot up. Um, but with the, with the supply limited, any change in demand is going to definitely increase the price. Now, this graph looks terrible. One thing you can do is you just go to settings here, and uh, if you click on settings, you click on scales, you can click on log scale there, and what it'll show you is something like this. Now, over the long term, this ain't half bad, okay? That's not as drastic as what we saw previously. Now, why log scale? Because things grow exponentially and a log scale just cuts out that exponential factor. This right here is pretty much a straight line of continued growth with a couple little nipples right there, okay? Now, do I think this is the end of Bitcoin? Personally, no, no. I think it's just like a bear market and you have to get through a bear market. So you just do whatever you do. You hodl, you blah, 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 blah. And then two, three years, we're all going to be golden. Now, two, three years, you're saying, well, maybe, could be sooner. We'll go into my projections as to when it will recover coming up soon. But first, I want to take a look at some reasons why crypto will recover. Because really, nothing has fundamentally changed with cryptocurrencies. The only thing that's changed is all of the, the FOMOers are basically selling out. They've all been scared out. The same people who bought in at $18,000, $20,000 are now selling right now. So those FOMOers, the fuddlers, <laughs> as apparently I've called them, uh, they're on their way out. And you know what? Good riddance. Because you got into the technology not understanding it. You got into the revolution not understanding it. Sure, don't reap the profits of the revolution. But for the rest of the people who understand what's going on, how this really is a revolution that's going to change all things, Things look good. So let's take a look at some of these things. Well, first off, um, Pantera Capital, Dan Moorhead, the CEO, says that um, it's very cheap. 
Bitcoin's a screaming buy. He says this over and over again. He says when a cryptocurrency breaks through its 200 day moving average, if you buy that day and sell a year later, you make an average of 239% without even thinking about it. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has not only broken through its 200 day moving average, it's also broken through its, oh wait, that's its 50 day. We'll just adjust that. We'll just adjust that. We'll look at the 200. It's also broken through its 365 day moving average. Look at that down below the 200 day moving average. So if you buy now and sell a year later, you'll get 239% gains. What are you going to get from your bank account? Let me ask you that. Hmm? 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 Yeah, exactly. So nothing. Okay. Also, in terms of regulation and getting stuff done, I mean, look at this. ICOs have been like the, the hot potato that nobody wants to touch, especially in like US, China, Singapore, things like that. Well, guess what? Now even ICOs um, U.S. investors, uh, not accredited investors, but anyone from the U.S. can partake in them with going through this whole process with like Republic, okay, which calls itself the Amazon of private investing. So yeah, more regulation, more people coming on. How about this? Facebook crypto ads no longer off limit. So again, they're allowing crypto ads and Facebook may acquire Coinbase. Now, Facebook has billions of daily users, billions of people who use Facebook every day. Do you think that if they have access to buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, even Bcash and Ethereum Classic, but do you think if they have access to buy those, they're not going to? Like, there could just be a, a Facebook wallet integrated with Facebook. You buy cryptos on there, you exchange them on there. Simple. Like, that is some of the best news I've ever seen because that's billions of people who can now get into the cryptocurrency market. And guess what? Instantaneous payments. Guess what? Not having to go through banks. Guess what? Not having these ridiculous charges, things like that. So that's some other big news. How about this? Microsoft, another gigantic company awarding OnChain, which is the parent company of Ontology and Neo. So they got awarded by the uh, Microsoft Accelerator. All right. So Big businesses are recognizing cryptocurrencies, all right? Now, additional stuff with NEO going on today, another cryptic tweet from NEO. You remember what happened the last time they had a cryptic tweet? I think Malcolm LaRider almost lost his head on that one. But another cryptic crypto tweet from NEO. This says like one day, three something or other. Stay tuned. You know, something could be coming up. Last time this happened, it was a big disappointment. You know, nothing, nothing spectacular expected here. But how about this? Uh, leading venture capital firm Anderson Horowitz raises its first dedicated crypto fund to the tune of $300 million. Look at that. VC funds are putting their money in crypto because they realize that's the next big thing. It's the dumb money that's leaving crypto. Really, the people who buy in at high, sell out low, the dumb money that's the people who are leaving. The smart money, the VC funds, they're getting in. They're just waiting on regulations. And not only that, but almost 30% of millionaires are interested in cryptocurrency. So one third of an individuals with a net worth more than a million US dollars of investable assets are interested in cryptos. These people are smart money, okay? Smart money is people who've made money. Um, most dumb money is people who lose money, I guess. But who, who the heck cares? Money's not that important, right? So, yeah, these, so aside from venture capitalists, aside from big businesses, we also have individuals with high net worth all getting into cryptocurrency. All right, that's a lot of people getting into cryptocurrency. What else? We have exchange traded funds coming up sometime soon. Now, exchange traded funds have not been available yet, but there's something that are in the works. Basically, institutional money started trickling into cryptos in mid-2017. It's been slower than many expected. It doesn't mean it's not coming. There's a lot of pieces that need to come together. One big piece is third-party custody. Um, it's, it's not binary. It's not like Coinbase custody will launch and suddenly every pension will throw $100 million into Bitcoin. It takes time for custody solutions to gain trustworthiness. But I think we'll have solid third-party customer third party custody by September of this year. September 2018. That means it's coming. Now, who else says it's coming? John McAfee, always talking about Bitcoin. He's probably the reason why a lot of people got into cryptocurrency, saying that Bitcoin is going to be worth a million dollars by 2020, or he'll, uh, his own, uh, you know. But he says, okay, people, can we please get real? One year ago to the day, Bitcoin was 2560. Today, it's over 6,000. That's a 140% increase. 
This year-to-year -year increase has been accelerating significantly. Stop the short-term thinking, get real. Look at that. If you put $2,560 in a bank account a year ago, guess how much it would be worth today? $2,560.11, okay? Worthless, but you put it in cryptocurrencies, it goes up. And I get it, a lot of you didn't put it in a year ago, you put it in five or six months ago at the all-time high. Uh, you're just going to have to you learn your lesson, you know? You, what is, it, what is it, something but don't lose a lesson? You can lose the whatever, but don't lose the lesson. Yeah, don't lose it. Don't lose a lesson from this. I mean, learn what it means to FOMO. Because if you got in November, December, January, guess what? You FOMO'd into Bitcoin. Uh, there's no soft way to put that. You FOMO'd into Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. And uh, yeah, it's probably hurting right now. It probably is. Guess what? It's hurting for everyone. I mean, I got into cryptocurrencies back below is $2,000 of Bitcoin. And it still hurts to see this because I know if I would have sold at the top, would have been better off. But guess what? I believe in the technology long term. I'm not here to sell my way out of the market. And sure, you can get into and out of positions, but, you know, different strokes for different folks. I'm not about doing that. I'm about accumulating as much Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as I can by the time this revolution takes over. And lastly, we have Charles Hoskinson, who says, what's often missed by the cryptocurrency is going to die broken record media. That's a, that's a long phrase. The cryptocurrency is going to die broken record media. Is that after the next wave of regulation, Wall Street is showing up to the party with all their locked up capital. That's tens of trillions of dollars entering the space eventually. Future is bright. And he's right. There's a lot of money coming into crypto. Yes, it's not happening right now. We got so used to um, every day having prices shoot up 10%, 20% during the, the altcoin bubble of December, January, that now when things are going down, when the market is trying to find a firm foundation to build itself on, people are losing their shit. There's no reason for it, okay? There's a lot of good things coming into cryptocurrency, a lot of future, but, you know, not financial advice, not telling you what to do. If you think sell, sell, you know, go for it. Now, a lot of you waited a long time to figure out when Bitcoin's going to recover. I did a video a while back, BTC when moon, where I scientifically compiled data, okay, looking at coin market cap every month, which months had price spikes, and June, so I looked at the past like three or four years. June, three out of the four years had a price spike. So I thought potentially June we would see something. June is over. We didn't see it. I was wrong, okay? Other months, November and December, also big chances for gains, all right? Now, there's also some other months. July and September have a chance as well. And we saw mentioned here, exchange, exchange trade fund September of this year. Possibly, we might see something September. All right. There's also people talking about a long bear market. People talking about a bear market for a year, two years, something like that. So there's the possibility of that. Does that phase me? No. I continue to make money and put it into cryptocurrency because I believe in it in the long term. I believe that this is the financial revolution of our time because Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are doing for money what the internet did for communication, which is making it open to anyone, easily accessible to anyone. And I think that we are still getting in at somewhat of the ground floor, very, maybe not, maybe not the fur the ground level, but the first floor or the second floor, something like that. Well, before uh, before floor 10 or 100 or whatever. So I think we're still getting in early. I'm still optimistic about it. Obviously, do your own research, come to your own conclusions, but this is what I think about it. And I want to bring that to you guys because I know there's a lot of fuddlers out there just, uh, you know, just hating things right now. And basically every video I make, people are like, oh my God, it's going to die. Bitcoin's going to zero. Blah, blah, blah. It's not. It can't. Bitcoin can't go to zero. It's it's next to impossible. It's an open source protocol. Guess what? Bitcoin price was established the day that some dude paid 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas. Ever since then, Bitcoin price has gone up. And I don't think it can ever come to a day where Bitcoin will be worth zero because it is an open source protocol. Anybody who wants to can use it. Okay. Same thing as the internet can't be shut down. You can't shut down Bitcoin. So there, suck it. Okay. Now, for all you guys who watched to the end, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like the video, and also, if you want to win the shirt, make sure you comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Is it going to zero? I'm sure. You're all going to write it's going to zero. You're retarded. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Love you guys. Have a good one. All right? Peace.